what up what up welcome back to the channel i'm moda j and we are locked in and this is all american episode six and we got us a good one we know miss tamia aka coop is the reason for all the spence's problems and we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do moving forward but before we get into all that shout out to notification gang if you're new to the channel and want to be a part of this hit the subscribe button turn on your notification bell so you get something every time i upload <sighs> Now, Spence and Coop, they had that talk. If you've seen my What's Next for Episode 6, we see that they're going to head on out to a little, the little cabin, you know, where Corey passed away at. And everyone's invited. So, one thing we know about All-American, there's going to be some drama. Let's jump into it. I'm not going to hold you up. This is All-American, Episode 6. We start the episode off. Spence, he got the rental car. You know what I'm saying? He drove up to the cabin and they got the little soft music playing for him and his emotions are running wild in his head. So once he actually gets to the cabin, he pulls up. Now, I remind you, he hasn't been to this cabin since Corey passed away. That was the last time they'd been there. And he came up here to clear his mind, you know, and clear up the cabin and just be away from everybody so he can get his mind to process correctly because he had a lot of stress in his life. Y'all know Tamia, every time we see her, she got the lost look on her, like, ooh. So she pulls up to Mama Spence, aka Grace, and she's like, uh, where's, where's Spence at? And Grace tells her, uh, he went out to the cabin. He, he didn't tell me he was going out there. Well, he's not just getting away from you. He's getting away from everybody. We know Spence had that argument. So for him, I got I just got to be away from Coop because it just triggers my shoulder. And I, I, I can't function when my shoulder's acting up. Liv and Layla, the, the two lovely ladies, they're at the house and Liv asks her, hey, I'm surprised you're free this weekend. Shouldn't you be in the studio recording, doing something? You got all that music going on. But Layla, she doesn't go into details, but we know the reason she's not doing all this is because of the big case she had against her dad to release patients to try to come work on her label. It's just a lot of mess. And then she asks um, Liv about her and Asher. And Asher has some plans for her. Planned out to the T, which makes Liv ask, Layla, where, where's Spencer at? And she says, oh, he went to the cabin, but he went by himself. And which, and which makes Liv want to deep dive into it. So we know that her and Spence, they have a connection with their brother, sister. But we know deep down inside, they're more than that. So she's like, you should be out there with him. He's going back to the cabin for the first time since his father passed. He's by himself. You should be there with him. He's vulnerable at this time. And Layla's sitting there thinking... You might be right. Let's head back over to Crenshaw, though. <sighs> Tamia comes in the house. She's talking to Grace, and she gives her a rundown. Do you know what happened about the fight last night? Did Spencer tell you? And Grace is like, yeah, Spencer told me. Now, the thing about Spence and Coop, Grace starts to explain to Coop that Spence has always looked out for you. So if he feels betrayed, then it's, it's going to be different between you two. And the reason she's brought up betrayal is because when they were little, Coop wanted to play football, so Spence asked the coach and asked the coach, and then they finally said, okay, Coop could play football. The time came, Coop didn't show up. So for Spence, he just felt like, you, you abandoned me. So what did Coop do? She apologized, and then they bought ice cream, but they used Spencer's allowance money. So Grace is trying to say, you two are just alike. It's just, you're going to have some rough times. But Coop thinks this is the end of their relationship after last night's fight. Now we just have a moment of, you know, Spence thinking back. Because you know one of the things that you're going to always think of is the the last time you seen your father. You know, you see him in a chair. He's passed out. You don't know if he's alive or not. You go over there and you find out he's dead. So that thought's going to always be in your head. He also had some good thoughts of when they first got there and Corey came outside and was like, hey, what are y'all doing here? And then them having some fun. But overall, it's just negative energy when you go in there and you have a loved one that passed and you got to be around be around all the things that they were around on a day-to-day -day basis but hey what do we know about all american it goes from being depressed and down to hey what the hell let's have fun so everybody they get in the caravan and they ride on down to the to the cabin we got Liv. she pulls up Liv, jj asher vanessa jordan simone layla Liv. And they all pull up and Spence is like, what, what are y'all doing here? And Layla said, well, I wanted to be here with you. And uh, everyone else, they wanted to be here to support you, too. So Spencer looks. He kind of looks upset. But then he starts smiling. And he gives his girl a hug because he wants to be around some people. 
Now things are about to get interesting, very, very interesting. Spence is thanking Layla. Oh, thank y'all for coming out here. You know, I really need all my friends around me in the time of need. And she says, oh, I didn't plan this, Liv did. Now they show Liv and Asher together. And Asher's like, uh, you know, Liv, this isn't the plan that I had. You know, I didn't feel like changing my plans to come out here. But man, you know, Spencer needs help and we're his friends. So let's be here for him. This is showing you that the subliminals are okay. Liv knows a little bit more about Spence than Layla does. And she's looking out for him. And Asher's starting to pick up too. Like, okay, Liv, we changed our plans. But to come out here with Spencer, uh, okay but are we gonna be able to have any one-on-one -on -one time just you and i and you know she's like yeah we can we're, we're gonna have some time we're we're out in a, a cabin out in the woods so we're gonna see if she has any free time all right now y'all be on the lookout my boy billy he's sliding back in there billy pulls up to the house and uh laura she's getting ready to handle some business but Billy pulls up and he got a little tool belt on she's what, what are you doing with those tools and he says uh well you know i heard uh <sighs> Liv, she uh, she told me the the garbage disposal was broke, so I'm gonna come over here and you know fix it. And while he's in there, he sees some dresses on the back of the couch. Laura goes up the stairs and she's looking like, hmm, I might let him back in the house. But for him, he sees dresses and he thinks, oh man, she's going on a date. So the boys, they all helping my boy Spencer clean up. What they have is a junk pal and a keep pal for your memories. While they're going through it. They start messing up. They start putting keep things in the in the, the throwaway pile. And Spence is like, "Hey, man, are you are you sure?" And JJ's like, "Man, to to be honest, I didn't even know we had two pals. So they had to start all over." But Asher finds a box and he picks it up and says, "Spence, is this trash?" Spence looks at it and says, "It might be trash, but there's something in there, something interesting we don't get to see." Here we go now. T about to get tossed around. Simone's walking with the two girls. You know, she doesn't really hang with them that much, but she starts asking Liv, why do you seem so distant? And she goes into, well, it turns out Asher met Vanessa over the summer. And then Layla jumps in and says, oh, yeah. And uh, he didn't tell her until two weeks after they got back in school and she showed up. So Simone's like, oh, wow, I didn't know that. But they also changed the subject. And now they get on Simone with filling out college applications and then writing her letters to him. Everyone else is like, oh, we did that during the summer. Simone starts to talk about, oh, well, you know, it's, it's different for me because I, I was pregnant. With her being pregnant, she's saying she's screwed. She doesn't have the time that everyone else has. So she's looking at them and feeling sorry. But then Layla tells her some excuse talking about don't be feeling bad about it. Listen to me, ladies. The best thing you can do is at a young age in high school, don't have kids. Wear protection. Do not have kids until you are ready or you'll be like Simone trying to fill out college applications and figure it out. You have too much on your back. Marry before you carry people. And that's coming from your Uncle Mo. <laughs> While the girls are walking around and having a little girls trip, Let's go see what the boys are doing. They come outside, they throw all the trash away. And you know JJ, he's a party animal. So what does he do? Let's party. He has a porta party that comes with water guns. It's got liquor in it. It's got a DJ booth. He pulls it out and he shows the boys, hey, let's get it on, man. It's time to get it cracking. We about to party. Water gun fight in three, two, one. You see everybody running around. They find the girls. They start spraying them down. They running and acting a fool. <sighs> what I would give to be outside running around acting a damn food during a pandemic. But they out there doing it. They don't even care. But you can see Layla, she runs off to the side because no one's really looking for her because it's really, you know, you shoot the girl that you came with. And Layla, she's here for Spence and he's in the house. So she need to go find Spence and uh, try to figure out what's wrong with him. It turns out inside of that box that Spence thought was trash, it's letters from his dad. The whole time Corey's been gone, he's been writing letters. And now Spence doesn't know if he should read them or, or just get rid of them. And Layla's like, man, you, sh <sighs> you should read them and just see what he says. Because if he was writing letters the whole time, then that means he obviously cared. It's just he didn't send them because we all know it was really the cancer. And Grace cheating on him with Billy. So that's probably why he didn't send them. Finally, we see Tamia doing her work. She's doing schoolwork. I told you she ain't coop until she finishes them grades so she can become a senior with everybody else. Now her and Patience are kicking it. Patience is over there, phone just ringing, going off. 
Coop is sitting there just asking weird questions and Patience is getting frustrated. And she's like, look, it's Lil Jewel, the girl that stole my song. She keeps hitting me up. I don't know what she wants. So she pretty much shuts Coop down. Like, hey, Coop, chill. What are you doing here anyway? You and Spence got into it. You need to go to the cabin and talk to your best friend. Don't you know his dad died there? So he's vulnerable right now. Pretty much the same talk that Liv gave Layla. Coop, you need to go see your friend. And now we're going to figure out this is why Coop ended up at the cabin. Patience forced her to go out there. We're starting to see a trend here. Nobody knows who they're dating as much as they think they know them. Now we have Jordan and Simone and they're the little dilemma is Jordan comes over and sees that she's in her book. And he's like, uh, what are you doing? You, you need to be coming to have fun with us. And if it comes to find out she's applying for Princeton. If you don't know, Princeton is on the East Coast. It is one of the prestigious schools. Princeton, Yale, Harvard, Duke is, you know, one of the elites. So she's applying for this. And Jordan is like, what are, you, what are you doing? That's Ollie over there. We're supposed to be working on us. And Simone says, well, I want to go there because I play tennis. They have a good tennis there. And Jordan didn't know anything about her past, about her playing tennis. And Simone starts to tell him, yeah, I was pretty good. They said, you know, I had that Williams sister in me. That was my potential. Well, unfortunately, she had a child. So we're going to have to see if she can shake back because true champions do. But she just wants to go out there and give herself an opportunity. But at this point, Jordan is like, I really want to get to know you more, though, because the only thing I got to know was you doing your pregnancy stage. So they didn't get to know each other, you know. Spence finally gets the courage to read the first letter. And in this letter, Corey is explaining how when he left, he was battling cancer. He wanted to try to fight back and then try to get back in the NFL or at least get in the NFL because he didn't have his opportunity. He also wanted to keep the family together with him, Grace, and then Dylan came along. But the whole dilemma was he felt like Grace betrayed him and threw the whole relationship away because she had that affair with Billy. And then the whole the whole situation with Corey not knowing if Dylan was his, he couldn't deal with that. So that was what the first letter was. And now Spence is thinking, dang, Corey was just always mad, but he was just frustrated as a man. As we expected, Billy's ass in that kitchen. You don't know what he doing in there, messing it up. You see water coming up out the garbage disposal. There's all kinds of peas in there. Like, come on, Billy, just... Y'all got money. Hire somebody. Don't mess that house up. You acting like my dad right now. He think he can fix everything. We know boys are going to be boys. So all the men watching this, we know amongst your friends, we can all clown each other in ways people on the outside can't clown us. We can clown each other and it's borderline disrespectful, but we all respect each other and we know we don't mean nothing bad about it. Now, Vanessa's in the kitchen with them and they hear JJ going in on Asher about how his dad lost all their takeout money. So Asher, you know, he had to teach himself how to cook. Vanessa says, you know what? I want hamburgers. Asher said, I'm on it. They go outside and Vanessa starts to confront him. Like, why are you letting your friends talk about you like this on a very sensitive subject? I know that hurts you. And Asher's like, come on, man, you know, man. That's me trying to have a white boy voice, but Asher, come on. And, I mean, you know, and Vanessa's like, I want I want the Asher I met over the summer that stood up for herself, that was relaxed and calm. This Asher, this isn't you. So Asher and Vanessa got very, very close over the summer. What they say is heating up. <laughs> Liv goes out to the little dock with Spencer and they start talking and, and they're getting close. We know they were close this summer. We don't know the specific details about it, but we know that they were close. And she comes out and tells him, you should read these letters. This is your father reaching out to you. You should just read them. It's going to make you feel better. While all this is going on, we got Asher and Layla on the on the patio looking. And Asher's thinking, hey, are you wondering what we missed this summer? So we're going to get to the bottom of this summer. It needs to be it needs to be now. Now, here's a change of events. Lil Jewel comes and talks to Patience. And you know, Patience ain't having that. You stole my song. I ain't got nothing to do with you. What, what, what do you want? Jewel's, oh, I, I, I appreciate you meeting up with me. But I don't know if there's any way I could ever repay you. What I want to do is I, I want to bring you on tour with me so you can sing your song the way that the song is supposed to be. And Patience is thinking, bring me on tour do what it's got to be something set up to this no artist is going to let me come and sing the song that they stole but we're going to see how this turns out maybe little jewel didn't want to take the song and jp took it from her mm -hmm. 
That's one way we can go with the, the conspiracy. Spence reads the second letter and Corey's just been leaving little hints for Spence. And in this letter, he's just saying he enjoyed the game nights that they had. You know, James and the game night at the house was the best thing ever. So Corey's go to spot in his mind was always thinking back about the game nights. And what he's telling Spence to do is live life and enjoy it and treat every night like this is a James game night, you know. He went into details about how Grace used to cheat. So you could tell he still had love for Grace. He still loved his kids. It was just hard to come back with, with the affair and everything. It's tough as a man. Asher and Liv, they about to start getting into it now. Asher seen Liv out there talking to Spencer. And when Liv comes in the house, she's, oh, Asher, you know, let's go on that midnight walk. Maybe I'll let you get to second base. Asher, straight up, he ain't having it. He says, are you sure you're going to be free? What happened to us getting our quality time? You've been around Spence a lot. Why do you always have to come and save from something? And Liv is, oh, are you serious? And Asher's like, hell yeah, I'm serious, girl. Now it's a turn of events. Now Spencer's in a good mood, but everybody else is starting to find out that, oh man, my girlfriend is doing this. My boyfriend ain't really this. And it, it ain't looking good. So Spencer's ready to turn up, but everybody else is like, yeah, okay, Spence. All right, now bear with me. It's going to be a lot of relationship conversation going on. I'm going to try to break it down by each individual relationship. But first, everyone's at the campfire. They playing a little heads up game. They're getting things right. And then out of nowhere, it comes up to Vanessa and Asher and Asher names off a person. And Vanessa says, hey, you had him on your wall when you were 10 years old. And everyone's looking like, how would she know that? Hmm. How deep did they get over the summer? First up, we got Jordan and Simone. Their little disagreement is Jordan, he goes off of, he does a movie, Back to the Future. Not only does he do Back to the Future, he says it's the best movie ever. But guess what? Simone's never watched it. She said it's only good if you're over 30. I took offense to that. It's a good movie, period. But she didn't know anything about that. But then it gets to Simone and she has a movie that Jordan knew nothing about because Jordan doesn't like watching movies with subtitles. So this is really showing that these two really don't know each other as good as they think they do. Now we're gonna change games from heads up to never have I ever. The rules are simple. You take a shot if you did whatever they say, but they're not drinking tonight because Liv is there. So what they have is some uh, jalapeno flavored uh, Pickle water. It's some white people stuff. I know nobody watching this ever drank that. And if you have, you're a weird individual. But let's get the game started, though. The first hit is, have you ever walked in on your parents? Asher's the only one that drinks. And everybody's like, oh, you got to tell us about that. But then Vanessa says, not the one time at such and such. And you got Liv looking like, how the hell would you know that? Now they getting back on Asher because they said Asher was acting like he owned the place. Y'all remember Asher used to always act like he was rich. So they're like, damn, we got in trouble again because of Asher. And out of nowhere, you hear Vanessa in her feelings. Wow. Never have I ever crapped on my friends to make me feel better. And everyone's like, what are, you, what are you talking about, Vanessa? We're all over here just chilling. But she's standing up for Asher and Liv isn't doing it. So everyone's kind of like, uh, how close did y'all really get? Back to Simone and Jordan. Jordan, Asher hated on him and said, never have I ever cheated a concussion protocol. Now, I don't know what kind of friends these are to throwing each other up under the bus, especially in front of women. Come on, y'all. Y'all supposed to keep that amongst each other and you ain't supposed to rat your boy out. But now, Simone hears this. Jordan, I care about you. How could you fake it? How could you fake a concussion? Now she cares about Jordan when a minute ago it was let me get up out of here and go to Princeton. But then she realized Princeton may be a little too hard for me on my own. I might need to stay here with Jordan and his loving family. This has Simone in furious. She pulls Jordan over to the side. How could you tell me? How could you not tell me this? This is hurting you and me. I actually care about you. These kids, let me tell you, these kids, it might be a Beverly Hills thing, but when I grew up, the hood people I was around, we wasn't having deep conversations about like this. It was just, we were different. These kids are acting like damn adults. Simone, before she runs off, she's talking about never have I ever bought $300 shoes in Vegas. They looking at Liv, Asher goes and talks to Layla. I thought you was in Vegas with her. Well, you weren't watching her? And she says, oh, just like you knew she was out in Mexico and she seen you out there? 
So now everybody's just starting to tell on everybody. I don't know what kind of friends these are, but these rich people, hey, these rich kids, stay far away from them. Layla exposes that Vanessa and Asher were together out there and Liv was surprised when she seen that. Now JJ's looking at Vanessa like, you, you was with Asher? It's like, oh, here we go. And guess who pulls up right in the neck of time? Miss Tamia. She opens up the door and she's looking like, man, what? I thought you came out here by yourself, man. You tripping. Someone needs to have that slow jam music playing, you know. Wow, wow, wow. Billy's in there. He finally gets things working. And he he mentions the dresses to Laura. He's like, okay, we're adults. I just want you to be happy if you're going out dating. Uh, wear the green dress, you know, because you, you always look good in that. And Laura tells him, oh, Billy, I'm not dating. And I was just going to go out with the girls, but I canceled that to be here with my handyman. You know, let's, let's toast up. Hopefully my boy Billy gets to stay tonight because he was about to leave, but she canceled all plans. Do your thing, Billy. Do your thing. Now, this is good how they did this. Spence and Cooper are having a very, very deep conversation. Same time Ash and Liv are having a deep conversation. And both of these conversations entwine with each other. What I mean is, Coop is saying, look, Spence, I'm not the reason you got shot. You were doing all this for me, but it's because you're trying to be too much of a hero. Same thing goes on for Asher, but I'm gonna get into his after. She's telling him, you just been here saving me the whole time. You have too big of a heart. And that's the reason you got shot. You're trying to be Superman. You're trying to step in and save me from everything. And that's the reason you got shot. And now you're about to hear what I mean. They're switching in. So Asher's doing the same thing with Liv. Like everything I've done, you've been a crutch for me. Steroids, you did that for me. To get me back on the team for the combine, you did that for me. Everything you did, was for me you just have a big heart you're trying to do too much for me i can do it on my own so this is where we see that spence and live the therapist said they were in love with each other we all been waiting on this and now we're showing that everyone's seeing y'all have the same characteristics y'all might be it y'all might be the couple but both conversations end a little bit differently now asher and coop they both love their best friends and Coop says our relationship probably won't be the same as it is. And with Asher and Liv, their relationship, they're probably just better off as friends. So they both lost somebody tonight. Now, I don't know where Coop and Spence's relationship is going to go, but Asher and Liv, they're done. Now, you know, it's only right we end all American on a good note. We clear up everything that's been going on. Spence reads the last letter. And it's Corey talking about, man, this cabin is the place I come to clear my mind. You know, whenever I just get too much on my shoulders, I come here, I relax, I think about life, I think about you guys. I think there's still time for me to bring you and Dylan out here. I wanted to bring you guys out here to see this, but there, there's still going to be time because I'm coming home. I'm coming to see you boys. So that was the last letter he didn't send, but we knew he was coming back. The whole time he was writing letters to the Spence and telling them what's going on in his life. So he was actually keeping in touch with him. Jordan and Simone, they talk out their problems. I tell y'all every episode, all you have to do is sit down and talk it out. You'll figure it out and it, things will be a lot smoother. So Jordan apologizes for telling, not telling her that he played on the concussion protocol where he cheated. And then she's talking about maybe I shouldn't go to Princeton. Maybe I should be here. And, and you and I, we, we work on it together and we move forward. You can still hear Corey's voice reading, talking about, I got to earn your trust. I know it's going to be hard, but I still have to try. We see Coop laying down with patience because she still has to earn back Spence's trust and she has to earn back patience trust because she went off on her. So Corey is just breaking down the end of the episode for us and we just get to see all the characters live it out. Unfortunately for Spencer... His last question of the night comes from Layla and she's only going to ask this one time and she wants enough respect from you, Spence, to tell her the truth. What happened this summer? Hmm. We want to know, Spence, what happened this summer? All right. There you go. That's episode six of All American. Let me know what you think below. What do you think happened this summer? We know $300 shoes were bought in Vegas and, uh, 
Simone knows about it. So let me know what y'all think. But hey, thanks for watching. I'm Modi J. If you like the content on the channel, hit the subscribe button. Definitely hit your like button. Be here next week for All American Episode 7. I'm Modi J, and I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.